Right, Steve. So you obviously thoroughly enjoyed your life in the betting ring, gambling. You still do. You're still a young man. Um, how do you see? <laughs> I'm only young in comparison with you, so. <laughs> yeah, <geez>. So how <laughs> do you see things going? Are you still going to be doing it in 20 years' time? They're like Johnny Lights in 30, you know. Well, I, I mean, I represent. Um, uh, a fella from Norwich, a racecourse bookmaker. I go out from uh, Paul Wilkinson, his name is, a nice chap. Um, I represent him about sort of 25, 30 times in the summer when he's got, you know, doubles and whatever. And I, th I, th I thoroughly enjoy going and making a book in the summer at the races. There's nothing I enjoy more when there's a few bob about this, that and the other. But I, I wouldn't be so mad keen at, at making a book in the winter time. I think it's very, very, very hard. Um, uh, they're, they're betting to low margins, they've got to do a lot of things right, the expenses are still the same, and it wouldn't really be my idea of fun, to be honest with you. So, what your main source of income would be professional gambling as a layer? Uh, well, yeah, generally, yeah. I mean, I, I, I like to go racing myself if I can, three or four days a week. As I said to you, I, I, I just, you know, I try and stick to places that I feel comfortable at. I mean, I think for anybody who wants to go to good class national hunt racing, I don't think you could really beat Ascot, to be honest with you. I think it's got a good pre-parade ring. They don't charge the earth to get in. You can you can get a tremendous view of the, uh, providing you've got a half decent pair of bins. You can get a terrific view of the racing because you can go and stand up in any one of the concourses higher up. So you're you know you're above the action, so to speak. It's pretty much um, that'd be pretty much ideal for me. But you know, if if uh, from from the bigger tracks, I'd say Ascot and Sandown would be the two to go to in the in the south. But if you're a if you're a small track, you know, lover, nowhere better than Plumpton to go on a Monday. Nowhere better. But you're right on top of the racing. You can get in the grandstand. You're lit, you're just above them. You can see them all the way round. You can touch them coming home. You can push one over the line if you've backed it with a bit of luck, and they come past if they're up this stand rail. And you know, you just um, you, you you've got to try and if from the from the gambling side of things or whatever, you've got to try and find an edge, a bit of an advantage. All those edges over the period of time they tend to get eroded away. Someone susses them out, this, that, and the other, but. I mean, I, I think that ground is absolutely colossal. You, 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 can, you can just have such a big advantage. I mean, places like Plumpton, for example, you know, once the ground gets bad there, it's, 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 it's no, no secret. It's, it's 25 lengths faster on the outside down by the train station, by that bend. They just, you, you get, you, if you go in the outside wing, on the outside wing, the outside wing of the hurdles to the inside, they all win up the outside. Nothing wins on the inside because they're puddling about in soup where they've been for the last three or four meetings. Simple as that. You must get a bit frustrated with some of the jockeys that don't seem to work it out, or maybe they do know. Wow, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Simon. <laughs> there you go, you've, uh, you've, uh, you hit the nail squarely on the head there. Um, you know, the, the, as I said to you before, the, the small field scenario, you can just absolutely hang yourself if you get involved in, in, in those races and, the, you know, all of a sudden you've, you've played, um, you know, you've played with a, with a view, you know, there's 100.8 in the, on the left hand side and there's 99.3 on the right and then all of a sudden you know, something in the green and gold goes from 4.6 to 6.2 and you've gone against one of the others. <laughs> you're, you're a million, simple as that. You haven't got a price. So to summarise, is it a positive or gloomy outlook for people that still manage to make money, especially online punting or late in the lane punting, but professional sort of gambling? Since I've been at it, which is, you know, since I, you know, say from, I don't know, 30, 30, 32, 33 years now, or whatever, I don't think the landscape is particularly bright for, I think the online side of it, it's far, far too easy for them to just cry foul, you know, 
you have 100 quid on a winner at 3 to 1, it wins at 15 or 8, that's the end of you. You know, you could have 100 quid at 3 to 1, it ends up 15 to 8 and gets beaten, it's near the end of you, to be honest. But, I mean, I, I was sort of quite lucky. Um, the, for me, personally, like the absolute boom time was sort of like around about 2000 to 2005. You, I had a couple of really, I had a blinding account with Toad Credit. I think Alan Potts mentioned that, funny enough. And it's, you, you could have what you like on. And the reason you could have what you like on was they probably had 200,000 customers all spinning it up every day, playing at Leicester, Market Razor, Lingfield, or whatever, whatever. They were taking a vast quantity of bets, and they didn't mind if you won two or three percent of your turnover. That didn't worry them because, you know, if punter A won, there was a chance that punter B might do 10 or 12 percent, and they looked at it a bit more, you know, they looked at it a bit more open mindedly. But nowadays, I mean, I think it's very tough. I think it's very, I think it's very tough. I mean, you know, you've got you've got the so-called you know Betfair were the best thing since sliced bread. They changed the rules. You know, all of a sudden, if you happen to you know if 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 you fitted in a certain criteria, you know, it was forty p in the pound, fifty p in the pound, sixty p in the pound. Well, anybody who's backing or laying horses pre-race. You can't stand for 40p, 50p or 60p in the pound of any of your weekly profit. You, you just, it's impossible because, you know, you don't get a rate back where the week where you do 8 or 10 grand when it all goes boss side. You know, it's it's just how it is. So, I don't know. I, I, I can't really see much of an upturn until, I don't know. I, I think the, the main problem is the Office, of the Office of Fair Trading a few years ago, they let the tracks bid for their race meetings. And for a start, there's way, way too much racing. That's the, that's the real, you know, that's, that's, that's the first move. If, if, you could knock, if you could knock two meetings out a week, you know, over, over, over a two year period, you get it down to 1200 meetings. You know, everybody would be better off. There'd be more runners for a start. You wouldn't have four in the first a day and four in one later on and five in the race at market raising and you know whatever it, it would it would it would increase field sizes but unfortunately um where the where the racing in the bha is concerned the tail wags the dog you know what the height the so-called high street big three who are no longer the high street big three because you know they don't really want to play either they're the ones that are you know, they're the ones that are making the rules. Simple as that. I can't really see it changing anytime soon. Um, and you know, what we got this what we got next year? Fourteen hundred and eighteen meetings, is it? Something like that? You know. It's too many for the horse population. But it's still a great game, we still like it. Oh, it's a it's a terrific game, you know, you have your you know, you have your kicks in the cobblers like we all do, but you just gotta grind your way through it, just keep just keep plugging away. And um one day, Simon, we'll all be at the great race course in the sky. Just hopefully, hopefully we last about another 30 or 40 years each. <laughs> On that point, Steve, thank you very much. No problem. Cheers, Simon. Cheers.